New York is an old city home to many different historical structures and many mistakes regarding city planning and the treatment of those structures. Hotel Pennsylvania is a building which is about to be removed from one list and added to the latter. Hotel Pennsylvania was first opened in 1919, just after the end of the Great War. Owned and named after the Pennsylvania Railroad, it was designed by McKim Mead and White and operated by Ellsworth Statler. The hotel is fit with 2,200 rooms, making it the largest hotel in the world, a title which it would hold for the next decade. It was built across from the New York Pennsylvania Station, which was also designed by McKim Mead and White, and owned by the Pennsylvania Railroad Company. Hotel Pennsylvania was designed to slightly resemble the gargantuan neoclassical and Beru's art cathedral of transportation, which led just across the street. The Hotel Pennsylvania was built to the absolute height of luxury, with no expenses being spared, whether it be the multi-floored columned lobby or the Café Rouge. The hotel's base was built with a facade of Indiana limestone, which extended up into the superstructure, which broke into four connected towers clad with brick, while the crown of the building was again lined with limestone. The twenties were standard fare for the hotel, with little happening regarding historical events, and prohibition came and went, as well as the economic boom of the twenties. However, the thirties and forties would be a time of much popularity and fan for it for the building. During these two decades, national phenomenons of music played within the halls of Hotel Penn. People in bands such as the Andrews Sisters, Duke Ellington, and Miller, all of these groups and more frequented the Café Rouge. As well as this, NBC would broadcast live performances, further increasing the popularity of both the hotel and the bands playing. After decades of success, the company managing Hotel Pennsylvania, Statler Hotels, purchased it from the now-struggling Pennsylvania Railway in 1948 and renamed it to Hotel Statler. However, this was not meant to be, and the hotel was sold to Conrad Hilton in 1954. During the transition period of ownership, Frank Olson, a biological warfare scientist who had become discontent with his work, was drugged with LSD by the CIA as a part of the MK Ultra program after being identified as a security risk. Frank Olson would plummet to his death only nine days later from his room on the 10th floor of the Hotel Statler. It would be officially ruled as a suicide, however, there would be much doubt surrounding his death, as CIA documents leaked or were released. Decades later, a second autopsy would be performed, furthering the claims of those who believed Olsen had been assassinated. After the Hotel Statler had been officially renamed Statler Hilton, it would inspire Bonnie Erickson to name the Muppet Statler of Statler and Waldorf after the Hotel Statler Hilton. Werther Waldorf being named after the Waldorf Astoria Hotel, another historic New York building. Though the glamour and fame of the hotel had faded from its big band days, things were still ran as usual and politicians and celebrities still frequented the hotel. However, one stands out among the rest during this era of the hotel's life. Fidel Castro visited New York in 1959 and he stayed in the Statler Hilton for the duration of his visit. In 1979, the hotel was sold to William Zeckendorf Jr., who renamed the hotel to New York Statler, which was now operated by Dunafee Hotels. The hotel was again sold in 1983 and renamed to Hotel Pennsylvania. It would then again be sold to Vornado Reality Trust in a joint venture with On. Ong Bang Sang, a hotel developer based in Singapore, who wanted to work with Planet Hollywood and remodel the hotel, though it would never work out with Vornado buying the 40% shares he owned. In 2007, Vornado announced plans to demolish the historic hotel in exchange for 15 Penn Plaza, an unimaginative and bland skyscraper. This announcement formed the Save Hotel Pennsylvania Foundation, which fought to preserve the historic and unique structure. After the Manhattan Board 5 voted 21-8 on making the building a historic monument, making it seem as if the Hotel Pennsylvania Foundation had been successful in saving the historic building. Only for the New York City Landmarks Preservation Commission to strike it down for unknown reasons, though I personally believe it to be state corruption. This attempt at saving the building, however, halted plans, and, and Hotel Penn was reopened up until 2010 when a tornado announced demolition for 15 Penn Plaza again. After the building had failed to be made a historic monument, the Save Hotel F Pennsylvania Foundation, in a desperate attempt to save the building, attempted to have its world-famous restaurant, the Café Rouge, which was still mostly as it was since construction, be made a historic or cultural monument, only to have that shot down as well by the New York City Landmark Preservation Commission, for the same reasons above. Hope had seemed lost as the plan was reviewed and accepted by the state. However, suddenly, Vornado decided to halt all demolition plans and instead revitalize the historic hotel. They would invest millions in remodeling the hotel, only for them to quietly renew permits for construction of 15 Penn Plaza. Only a few years after Vornado's remodel of the hotel, in 2021, they announced plans to demolish it in part of the Empire Station Complex. 
Vornado stated the reasons for demolition are the hotel math has deteriorated significantly over the last few years, and the benefits of continuing to operate the hotel were outweighed by the drawbacks of maintenance, taxes, and lack of demand. A shockingly similar reason as to why Hotel Penn's sister building, Old Pennsylvania Station, was demolished. As well as this, it is fairly clear Vornado never had any intention of reusing or preserving the horse historic hotel. Already, Hotel Pennsylvania has been stripped of its fittings, and, it's, and they are currently being sold off in auctions. Hotel Pennsylvania's end is at this point inevitable. However, the extremely harmful Empire Station complex, which will see the destruction of 50 historic structures, including the last bit of Old Penn Station's impact in New York, the Old Penn Powerhouse, will all be demolished to make way for 10 new, uninspired, and bland glass skyscrapers, which will only further the deterioration of the New York skyline. It would also ensure that the, the rebuild Penn Station initiative never happens, which is a financially feasible way to atone for New York's past sin of demolishing old Penn Station and making it an, an almost exact replica with modern amenities. Old Penn lacked. However, if this Empire Station complex is built, it will never happen. As well as this, in a desperate attempt to stop or halt the Empire Station complex, some historians and activists are seeking to make new Penn Station and Madison Square Garden historic monuments. Though I understand why they are trying to do that, I believe it to be the wrong move, as it will only solidify the mistakes of the past, as will ensure the old Penn Station never sees the light of day again. Thank you for watching my video. This is Quick Histories. Feel free to join my Discord below, like, subscribe, and be sure to check out the Rebuild Penn Station initiative. Both links will be in the description below. Have a good day, and thank you for watching.